Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 3rd October 2016. Last week we have seen the article on the disadvantages of simultaneous elections. One of the major things which was stated is the voting behavior of the electors will be influenced when the simultaneous elections will be held. And the second point is the national agenda will dominate the regional agenda during the simultaneous elections. In this article, Mr. Venkai Naidu questions this and he says that from independence till 1967, India went through the simultaneous elections. Did it influence the politics? Now, today Indian voter is so dynamic and he can understand the logic of elections. So he can choose between the parties among central and the state elections. And on the other hand, he also enumerates the advantages of the simultaneous elections. The first being the governance. Now because of the simultaneous, uh, because of the regular elections, the modal code of conduct implementation is impacting the governance process. And the political parties are also forced to give populistic note or populistic tone to the people rather than plan, programming for long term development of the country. And the expenditure is going to drastically come down. The deployment of the police and other governmental staff will also decrease. So this all will help for better governance in the country according to Mr. Naidu. Now coming to OPEC situation. The oil exporting countries, so there was never unanimity with regard to the reduction in production. The major producer of the oil, Saudi Arabia, it used it to oppose that saying it has to sell it abundant reserves and its always policy was pump at will means produce as much as you can. Because of the increased production and sluggish demand, the barrel price has come down to less than half. Now the Saudi Arabia thought the decrease in barrel price will worst affect the shale gas producers and also the Iran. But on the other hand, the Saudi Arabia is the worst affected and its fiscal deficit has increased and for the first time it has asked for a loan of 12 billion dollars. And the Saudi Arabia is also involved with local wars in Syria indirectly, directly in Yemen. So the Saudi also has agreed this time for the OPEC's decision of limiting the oil production to 7 lakh barrels per day. So it is going to raise up the oil prices in the future. Now coming to Maharashtra, the context of this is recently Marathas in Maharashtra, they have taken up agitation. The, re the reason for the agitation is to provide for a OBC status and also for the repeal of SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act. The similar demand also has come up in Tamil Nadu. Now if we carefully observe the number of cases Oh, I mean imposed under SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act are slowly increasing and there are also frivolous cases and it has many provisions which can be said as draconian such as non-bailable provisions but however the total number of cases and atrocities if they are compared relatively our criminal justice system is not very sensitive to the cause of the Dalits so in this context it has been said that the law implementation of the law is the major problem over here and the second thing is why the demand for reservations is growing up among the farming communities either it is Jats, Patidars or Kapus in Andhra Pradesh. The first thing is the agrarian distress and the second thing is there are number of opportunities are decreasing in the private sector for the people who are not educated. So without the reservations, the quality of education has become a challenge. So that is the reason why most of these people are demanding for the reservations now. So if this has to be addressed, agrarian distress and generation of the employment is the only solution. But however political parties want to play to the politics on this particular issue. And with regard to the repeal of the act, the second thing is the perceived assertion of the Dalits by the Marathas is also the reason. So in these circumstances, the Supreme Court has made it clear that um, economic criteria cannot be the basis for the reservations. Um, 
it is the social and developmental criteria. In this context, when our constitution has provided for the reservations through Dalits, it is social justice which has moved that. It is not the provision of the economic justice. Now coming to war and peace. Now let's talk about India and Pakistan. The war and peace is a subject in the union list. It means that um, only the president of India can declare a war or make peace with any country. So whatever be the case, um, the first point is war will make everyone a loser. There are no permanent winners in the war. So if you observe the post-war economic situation, there will be inflation, scarcity of the goods and food, and it is going to worsen the life um, and income of every individual. It's going to take a country backward on the front of the development. Now let's take India and Pakistan has fought four wars now. Immediately after independence and after that in 1965, 1971 and a limited war on Kargil in 1999. Now 1947 the matter went to the UN and stopped there. 1965, the Tashkent Agreement, 71, Shimla, 1999, U.S. has uh, intervention has finally led to the end of the war and withdrawal of the Pakistan. Now, in all these wars, so the Tashkent or Shimla Agreement, if you see, so the major thing they preach, preach for is the peace. So in this context, um, present day, the terrorism and growth of Islamic elements in Pakistan, Growth of the right uh, rightist uh, Hindu elements, which are talking about uh, Hindu nation, all these are raising the suspicion among the minds of the people. So everyone are justifying their actions, showing the other side. So in this context, uh, the war mongering is increasing. So India has to realize that its secularism, pluralism, that is its protection for the national unity and integrity. So in the this secularism and pluralism gives away for cultural nationalism and majoritarianism, then it is a threat to India's unity and integrity. It is not the enemy from outside, it is the enemy inside which is more dangerous. That's what is this article talks about. Now, India-Japan nuclear deal. Now, if India wants to establish the nuclear reactors, it needs space. Now, GE, Westinghouse, these companies are brought by the Japan. And these companies are establishing in Kovada and also in Maharashtra, Kovada in Andhra Pradesh and Jetapur in Maharashtra. Now in these circumstances, the spare parts for this nuclear reactors, they have to come for Japan. So that's why India-Japan nuclear deal is critical for our nuclear energy. So, Japan is very much sensitive to the nuclear issues because it was the only country which is a victim of a nuclear bomb. So, India is a not signatory of NPT and CTBT. So, Japan uh, diet has to ratify the civil nuclear deal between India and Japan. So, it says that without the signing of NPT and CTBT, it cannot go forward. So, finally, it is suggesting for something called nullification clause. What do we mean by this nullification clause? In case India conducts the tests again, the deal automatically comes to an end. So India is opposing to this. Finally, so the, an agreement is reached. Probably India might have agreed for the nullification clause. And India has asked in return for a reprocessing of the fuel supplied by J Japan. So whatever be the case, the India and Japan nuclear deal is expected to sign when the Prime Minister Modi visits Japan for annual summit. Now Brexit, you know that after the Brexit vote, the Britain has to initiate the Brexit proceedings according to Article 50 of the Vienna Convention. So the, any country has to initiate the Brexit proceedings, but there was no time limit mentioned for that. Once the proceedings are initiated, they have to be closed within two years. Ms. Theresa May said that from March onwards, they are going to initiate the Brexit proceedings. Now, Mr. Bezwada Wilson, he has got Raman Megasese Award. And his major area of work is manual scavenging. According to him, the manual scavenging is the manifestation of the worst form of the caste in the modern days. 
Manual scavenging is also a gender discrimination because 90% of the people involved in manual scavenging were women. And lack of access to justice are else too many hurdles in access to justice for the marginalized sections is limiting the percolation of the justice to these people. That's what Desword Wilson's opinion is. Now, India ratifies the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, 55 nations constituting the 55% of the carbon emissions has to ratify the Paris Treaty to get into effect. With India signing, the 62 countries have signed the Paris Agreement. They form the 52% of the total global emissions. Now, on the day of Gandhi Jayanti, India has launched and India has ratified the Climate Change Agreement. Gandhi has clearly said that an environment shall be seen as an inheritance, not as an inheritance from our forefathers, but as a loan which we took from our future generations. These words of wisdom, they talk about sustainable development. Now, India has to make a total expenditure of $2.5 trillion for its INDC commitments. And India is asking for $100 billion per year in climate finance for developing nations by the developed nations. As of now, it stands at $2 billion. Now, Pakistan has attacked the, again, in Baramulla, the army camp. So the militant attacks are still continuing even after the surgical strikes. Now, organ implantation, organ donation. With regard to the organ donation, maintaining of a track of post-organ replacement survival rate. Maintaining a track is important for post-organ transplantation uh, revival rates. Or in these circumstances, India do not have proper registry maintenance. Now, National Informatics Center and National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization, NOTO, these are trying to maintain a registry of the organ transplantation and the donors who are willing to transplant the organs. So that's a welcome step with regard to the organ transplantation in India. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much.